Good morning, everybody. Thank you to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to provide some background on ongoing research initiatives in Europe on our topic. There are currently several larger research groups exploring populism from a distinct political communication perspective, and I would like to introduce you to two of them and share some of their empirical insights. Um, Let me start by saying that populism has become such a big topic that it is hard to escape, for example, at an average newsstand. Populism has had a long and positively connotated history in the US, which is different from um, Europe. Um, but uh, all this journalistic talk about what populism allegedly uh, is and who um, allegedly is a populist has not necessarily helped to get a clearer grasp of it. Um, many political scientists, oftentimes from Europe, have tried to defend populism as a meaningful scholarly concept and have written several well-received books and definitions um, uh, uh, on definitions, approaches, and uh, meanings. I'm also one of those who try to take this concept seriously and to extend its scope from the well-established uh, scope um, uh, or, or territory of political science to the newer realms of communication science. Primarily in an effort to help explain the growing popularity and success of uh, populists in, in, in Europe. This map here points out some correlations between successes of populist parties and various contextual factors often coming from the economic sphere, therefore I like this first presentation um, a lot, there are clearly parallels found uh, in Europe. Um, well, one important contextual factor is uh, the media, um, old and uh, uh, new. And um, the link between populism, democracy, and the media has taken the European conference circus by storm. There are countless workshops, conventions, and meetings of European academics virtually every month, um, nicely illustrating uh, the point of the title of my presentation that populism research has become uh, a big hit. <coughs> For example, uh, there are, um, uh, was a pre-conference at the last ICA, and there will be another pre-conference at the next ICA uh, in Prague. Uh, there are calls for special issues, and uh, the EU is currently throwing money at anyone who helps to deconstruct the populist <coughs> appeal and uh, that boost democratic engagement. Um, I believe that we can distinguish four different meanings or uses of the concept, um, and I'm very happy to elaborate on them uh, in the discussion. I'm also very tempted to say a little bit more on my ideological understanding of populism, but perhaps we can have this discussion in the Q&A. In my own research, I'm mainly interested in populism as a communication strategy that combines elements of substance and form, um, or content and style, and in <coughs> media populism, or mediated populism, <coughs> that distinguishes populism through the media, populism by the media, but also looks at the media as a platform for citizen populism and as an institution confronting uh, populism. Um, With my specific um, research interests, I have found like-minded colleagues in two uh, environments, in an EU network and in a national research center, and I would like to say a little bit more about this. The first network I'm involved in um, is, uh, or unites researchers from uh, 32 West and East European countries. It is funded by the uh, European Union, and two panelists from today, Jörg Matters and uh, Sven Engers, are here in the front, <coughs> also participate. Um, cost, 
refers to cooperation in science and technology, a specific funding scheme of the European Union, and our research focus is populist political communication, and here you can see a screenshot from our website. It's a big operation with a professional management structure. Um, I'm in the steering committee as um, uh, uh, head of uh, work group two that looks on the media. Two years ago, we uh, published our first uh, book, and next year we will publish another book. This book was fairly descriptive. The next book will uh, present uh, empirical data. And um, um, we have received a lot of attention and were even invited to the French Senate and, and, and Paris and uh, uh, presented our findings to politicians and journalists. It uh, attracted quite some buzz online and um, we felt uh, very flattered when we entered the building here, me, together with the omnipresent Claes de Reza, of course, from, um, from Amsterdam. I'm mentioning this because we received uh, a big award from the European Union for our dissemination uh, strategy. We produced an explanatory video um, that um, um, is targeted at young people and um, um, I'm, I'm really hoping that we have some time in the Q&A uh, to show you this award-winning video. It's five minutes and I will not show it now so that I have an opportunity to tell you a little bit more about um, uh, a, uh, a second group, a Swiss team. The, Euro, um, the University of Zurich is leading house of a national research center on democracy studies where we also focus on populism uh, research. Um, our team, of which uh, Sven is also a member, is interested in how political actors from different countries and very different party backgrounds communicate their messages through traditional media formats but also newer social media <coughs> platforms, specifically Facebook and Twitter. Um, a first <coughs> study I would like to uh, point your attention to asks, um, where do populists prefer to spread their messages? An analysis of talk shows and social media in six countries is going to be presented in Prague at the ICA. It um, distinguishes nine key populist messages that politicians, but also the media, use when they talk about populism, and seven populist communication styles. And it uses these categories uh, to content analyze the statements of 98 politicians from 31 uh, parties, extreme and mainstream parties, <coughs> old, traditional, established parties, but also newer challenger parties in six countries. Uh, the US, the UK, France, Italy, Germany, and uh, Switzerland. <coughs> what this study finds, I don't have time to go into uh, the details, but I'm happy to uh, talk more about the operative uh, aspects uh, tomorrow um, or later, is that uh, social media clearly beats political talk shows as a preferred channel for spreading uh, populism. Politicians who would like to vent uh, political messages use social media more than political talk shows. A second finding we find here is that extreme parties at the polar end of the spectrum, be it on the left or the right, use populism more and newer challenger parties also use it more than long established mainstream parties. Finally, populism on social media is mostly used in fragmented forms for various reasons I'm happy to uh, uh, share in the Q&A. Um, a second study uh, that you can enjoy at ICA or uh, uh, have me talk uh, more about later is um, titled, uh, it's focusing on the news media, the role of journalists, and it is titled The News Media as Gatekeepers, Critics and Originators of Populist Communication, a 10-country uh, study. It offers a content analysis in 10 European countries, Austria, Bulgaria, Switzerland, Germany, France, Italy, the Netherlands, Poland, Sweden, and the UK, and analyzes um, um, how tabloid newspapers, quality dailies, but also weeklies, and this includes Sunday papers or news magazines, um, um, uh, 
um, cover two topics, migration and market policies. We picked these two topics because migration um, is a topic attracting right-wing populist discourse um, and um, uh, market, uh, labor market policies, a topic that attracts labor, uh, sorry, left-wing populism. You can say this is kind of dual between Trump and, and Sanders. Um, and um, we analyzed about 10,000 news stories um, in those uh, 10 countries. Um, again, I don't have time to go into the details. What we find is that with regard to gatekeeping, the European news media are very critical of populist politicians um, and uh, uh, voice a lot of skepticism towards uh, populists. In their um, uh, interpreter role, we also find rejection, negative evaluation of populist politicians um, in the quality media, mostly because they seem to consider populists a threat to democracy and more importantly, a threat to their own autonomy and independence, something that uh, Silvio has already alluded to, the tendency of populists to be very critical of any kind of uh, um, uh, uh, checks and balances institutions, including the news media. In the initiator role, we find a tendency that both quality media and tabloids, and tabloids even more so, uh, voice their own kind of uh, populism, um, quality media more an anti-establishment bias, being critical of established institutions, whereas uh, tabloids uh, more people-centric. Um, in sum, um, uh, what I would like to uh, uh, get across here is that I consider populism a, a thin-centered ideology. Um, it is a communication strategy that combines substance and style. Politicians use it as a political strategy in a project of renewal, use personalistic leadership, um, um, posit themselves as a representative of the public and mobilize the public with a us versus them uh, polarization. In terms of the media, uh, because European news outlets are largely critical, and this is what our second study found, towards populists in their gatekeeping and the role, politicians use social media to bypass, to circumvent the news um, media, and um, we also find these news organizations, uh, not all of them, uh, and not at, uh, at a decreable amount, but uh, to engage in media-initiated populism also at certain times. Um, when is populism a threat? I believe populism is a threat in a majority democracy, more so than in a parliamentary democracy. Um, and I can uh, talk more about this. Um, I also believe that <coughs> populism is a threat um, uh, if uh, checks and balances institutions are less established in a certain context, my second bullet point. And I believe that populism is a threat to democracy if the press um, does not um, um, uh, receive autonomy, credibility, um, whereas a, a, a country where we have a free and strong and autonomous press and it, it uh, enjoys a lot of credibility at the audience, populism will um, not be a threat to democracy. Uh, one can relate this to a hybrid media system, but my time is up and I thank you for your attention.